We are now ready to begin the Florida Gulf Coast press conference. This time we'd like to ask Coach Dooley to please make an opening statement. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is congratulate Coach Williams in North Carolina on a, on a terrific effort. And I thought that uh, the start of the second half obviously dictated uh, the result. Uh, really proud of our guys. I thought we played as hard as we could. We didn't we had a boneheaded start to the second half, but I thought our effort was tremendous and really proud of the guys. And I think. Um, Looking at some things, I think Carolina is a team that, looking down the road, will be a, can contend for a national title. There's a reason they're so good, and uh, but I'm proud of our guys' effort and compliment Carolina for their effort. All right, at this time we're going to open the floor up for questions for the student athletes. Once again, this segment is for student athletes. Questions only. Christopher, can we get a microphone here on the aisle? Dana Caldwell, Naples Daily News. Uh, Christian and Mark Eddy, uh, you guys must have been feeling really good at the half, very competitive half. Actually, they, you know, they had a 9-11 point lead in there somewhere, and it looked like they had a chance to knock you out in the first half, and you guys really hung in there. How, how was the mood in the locker room at the half? Christian, if you could answer that first, please, and then Mark Eddy. Um, we were excited. We played a good half at the beginning, and um, we just knew we had to keep up the intensity to, to come out with a win, and uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't do that. Just like Christian said, um, we played a great first half, and um, we made a few big mistakes in the beginning of the second half that kind of cost us, and we just kept playing from behind, and it was pretty hard to do. Okay, we're going to go here, and then we'll go over here. RJ Rowan, Naples Herald. Uh, Christian Marchetti, the first few minutes, was there any sort of um, surprise or shock with the uh, size and length of North Carolina? Mark Eddy, could you go first this time, please? Um, I'm long myself, so it wasn't a surprise there, and I'm, I think I'm fairly tall. But it, they were a lot bigger than I expected, too, because when I watch them on TV, everybody looked proportionate to each other. But when you're right next to them, maybe they're a little bit longer than they appear on TV. But it was a great, com great competitive game, and they were pretty big. Christian, could you comment, please? Yeah, they were as big as we thought they were. They were everywhere on the court, and um, they seemed to block everything, I think. Um, Johnson had eight blocks, I think, and um, they just controlled the paint. Okay, let's go here in the middle. You guys never lack for confidence. Seth Softy in Fort Myers News Press. You guys never lack for confidence, but you seem to have a certain calm and poise about you. Can you talk about that belief that you guys had that you were going to get this done? Christian, that first three-pointer, you just took your time and, and buried it. Can you both address that? Go ahead, Christian. Um, yeah, the first three kind of gave me a little bit of confidence going into the game. But um, we just know that if we make the right plays and we play the right way, we can compete with anybody. And um, we showed that in the first half. And we made mistakes in the second half. So we couldn't show that the, in the second half. Mark Eddy. Just as Christian said, um, you always have to believe in yourself. You have to think about it. All of us are Division One athletes. So we believe in ourselves. We work just as hard as they do. We just have to make the right plays every time. And it will give us up the best chance. Back on the aisle here. To both of you, please. Uh, you know, Joe said coming in that this is a really good opportunity. You know, this is NCAA tournament for you guys, you young guys. And uh, one of the things to build on for the future. And obviously, uh, both of you guys are back. You just lose two seniors. So uh, how do you feel coming out of this for the future? Mark Eddy, could you please go first? Um, I feel pretty good. Now we see that we can't make stupid mistakes. We just have to play hard at all time. And, um, give it all we got because we see what we need to do now playing with um, a number one seed and see what it takes. Christian? Um, we're very blessed to be here and um, this is one of those feelings and experiences that you want to come back every year and then you're just hungry to get back and I think that's what we're going to be in the off season, and I think we'll be back. Let's go right here. Hey, uh, this is for Christian Neil Amato from the Naples Daily News. You said North Carolina was big, they were everywhere, yet, uh, you know, your line, personally, seven assists, one turnover. How did you feel about the way you played, handled their, their depth and size? Um, well, I think they were helping up a little bit on my drive. So I found the open guys, and I just tried to make the right play. And um, it just uh, worked out in my favor this game. Back in the middle. They kept trying to separate from you guys in the first half. And they would push it, and then you guys answered every time. Did you see? the response in their faces at all, a little bit of surprise at all that you guys weren't going away. Mark Eddy, could you answer that? Um, yeah, I could say that because I don't think 
like they expected us to come and compete at the level we did. And then once they saw that, like you saw the second half, they brought it up a notch and we made a stupid mistake that put us in a hole. Let's go here and then we'll get you. Jonathan Alexander with the News and Observer. Uh, what mistakes were they making in the first half or what were you guys doing well that made y'all be so successful? Christian, could you handle that? Um, we were playing team ball in the first half. We were making each other, we were making plays for each other. And in the second half, we were trying to play hero ball, like coach said. And um, yeah, that's about it. We, we were playing selfish, I think. On the aisle? You guys actually out-rebounded them tonight. I think uh, coming in, you guys would have really taken that. What, what was it like uh, hitting the boards against these guys? It was very, very physical inside tonight, uh, both of you. Just what was it like in there under, under the boards fighting for rebounds? Mark, Eddie, could you go first, please? Um, it was pretty physical. We just knew that we couldn't let up any second because they're a very good rebounding team, so we made sure we box out every time and go and get the ball at the high speed. Christian? Uh, they were, like I said before, they were everywhere, but we just tried to um, match their effort and match their intensity, and uh, we did that today in the boards. Other questions for the student athletes? All right, gentlemen, thank you very, very much. All right, at this time, we'll take questions for Coach Dooley. Let's start right there. Joe, philosophically, how proud are you of what everything that you guys have been working for displayed itself in the first half? All the classic, fundamental, pure basketball stuff working very well. Well, I thought the guys, they, we, we played hard. Uh, we got, I have no problem. We have no problem with our effort. And uh, the guys competed, played as hard as they could, and lost to a better team. And that's, you know, we can analyze and study, but, uh, you know, they're terrific. And our guys played as hard as they could. We just got worn down. Going on the aisle here. Joe, just uh, if you would briefly comment on the season overall and then, uh, you know, what uh, you guys grew a lot this season. And then, uh, you know, again, you said coming into this, this would be a great experience to, to build on for the future. And just uh, to, how do you feel about this tonight and how do you feel about, you know, starting next season? The bad about tonight, you don't want the season to end. It's always miserable when the season ends. But, you know, you'll take a week or so and look around. We got a lot of young guys. Uh, hopefully it's a learning experience for them for me. You see what it takes. You can't play one way for a little bit and then all of a sudden do it. Now, part of that is a tribute, not part of it. Most of that is attributed to Carolina. I mean, when you come out and, you know, you're trying to explain to these guys, that he is 6'11", he is 6'11". It's not a media guy misprint, and he's very athletic. And when you get to the lane, there's another one behind him. I, mean, I think what North Carolina does a great job of doing is they just wear at you. They've got the four great posts. They've got four, you know, they've got depth on the perimeter. And hopefully the young guys will understand that you've got to get in the weight room, you've got to get stronger, you've got to get bigger. and uh, learn from this going into, into next season. Other questions for Coach Dooley? Over here. Right there. Joe, from your remarks and from Mark, Eddie, and Christian earlier, it sounds like um, you guys feel like the game got away from you in the second half. It's not very common that a 16 seed gets to say that against a one. Well, I'm sure there were Coach Williams challenged them at halftime, and we, you know, we came out. It wasn't. We had 14 turnovers, but it just wasn't the turnovers. Some of our shot selection in the second half. It was like live ball turnovers. I mean, we ran in there on first sides instead of getting the ball to a third side or getting the ball reversed. We came down and, and, and went early, and that's when the game really got away. I thought it was when we we stopped running offense. We, you know, they scored, and we tried to come back and score quicker than they scored, and that put us in harm's way. You can't give them transition, and when you shoot bad shots and they block it and. Next thing you know, it's a three-point play the other way, and some of those shots weren't turnovers, but they should have been. Let's go back on the island. Casey, could you get the other? Yeah, Joe, could you uh, comment? I thought Christian had a really nice game today. Uh, he had some fantastic assists, I thought. Could you comment on Christian? And uh, Trey gave you a big lift tonight. Trey, Trey's played well at the end of the year. I mean, uh, he's really been a factor, and, you know, unfortunately for us, he, you know, he puts himself in harm's way with some cheap, uh, cheap fouls. He can't head, you know, he fouled in the – on a rotational deal when he shouldn't have fouled, and then he hip checked the kid on a ball screen, which wasn't part of the play. I mean, he's, we've got to get him to where he can play 25 minutes at an effective rate. Uh, you know, he's, he's really gotten good in the post. He's scoring more effective. His field goal percentage has gone up, and he's a sophomore. So hopefully, there'll be a, a jump from his sophomore to his junior year, just like Christian. Could, could you also comment on Christian and Mark Eddy tonight? Yeah, I thought, you know, I, I thought the when, once Mark Eddy figured out that. Uh, 
how tall Carolina was, and he faced up and played facing a little bit more. I thought he was a little bit effective. He had a couple uh, open shots he didn't make, but I thought for the most part he played well. And I thought Christian was aggressive, especially in the first half, downhill drives, and uh, for the most part found guys open. That's why he had a career high in assist tonight. Let's get Neil here, and then we'll go there. You kind of touched on my question, which is about Christian. You, you mentioned his career high in assists. Um, his season assist turnover ratio was about 1.5 to 1, but today 7 to 1. Uh, what do you attribute that to him seeing? And then also, what would you like for him to work on for next year? Uh, his, he's got very good vision. I think he, he, he has a tendency to dribble it one too many times. I think he'll, he'll, he'll improve at that next, next year. I mean, he'll, he'll see something. He'll take one more to try to get a little bit closer. Uh, if, if Christian could put on 15 pounds of muscle, there's no telling how much further he can take his game. He's, uh, I think it would help a lot of things because, but first of all, I think it would help his confidence. Uh, I think it would help him not get worn down. He's, you know, he's a buck 75, soaking wet, if that. Uh, and I think, you know, if he can do those things, I think he can take another jump. You look at the jump he made from his freshman to sophomore year, I think he can make another jump, and I hope he does. Going back in the middle there. Speaking of next year, you've got two guys who are on red shirt this year who become eligible, and you've got three freshmen that we know of coming in. It'll be the first time you'll have 13 guys available, at least you know, on paper now starting. Can you just talk about the prospect of having the experience and that array of bodies, all of the style that you like, and what that could mean for this, you know, this program? Hopefully this is a learning you know, deal for our program and our guys. And, It'll create competition in practice. I mean, I, I, you can imagine, you can see, and one of the reasons North Carolina is so good is because when you've got that, those type of guys in practice every day and you're competing against them every day, there's no, you got two ways to go. Either you compete and get better or you get left behind. And I think it, it, it's a great lesson to learn. If, if, you, if, you want to, if you want to be a competitor, you have to go home every day and practice and play, play against the guy uh, in front of you. And, take his spot or let him take yours. And, and our guys will hopefully learn that. And we've got enough depth going into the year that uh, it, it'll be very competitive. Back over here. Uh, you talked about Trey developing in the post, especially in the latter half of the season. Um, between him, between Johnson, between Terrell, is there any one player that you think improved the most from the start of the season to today? I would have to say Zach, because here's a young man. I mean, Trey got to practice. Here's a young man that a year ago was not able to Everybody says he redshirted, he shot free throws. I mean, he couldn't practice, couldn't shoot, couldn't do any, anything with movement involved. And, you, you know, you take him, got sat out of here, and now he's got to you put the ball in his hands here. Make good decisions and get the other four guys involved in your freshman and you haven't played in a year. So you look from December on, his assist turnover ratio, the way he scored. Obviously, he saved us in, a, in several games. And um, I, I, think his, I think he'll make a big jump from this year to next year because he's seen it all now. And the game will slow down a little bit for him. And uh, we're excited to have him for another three years. We're very excited. Back in the middle here. Should people expect to see FGCU back in the NCAA tournament next year, maybe as a better seed? You know what? We'll line up tomorrow and figure out tomorrow. And you know, we'll, we'll line up next year and try as hard as we can again. I mean, there's, you know, it's, like I tell you guys, it's, it's, and you guys know it, it's hard to get here. I mean, there's teams throughout the country that are good teams. There's, 68 of us, and you know we'll line up again next year and try as hard as we can. Any other questions? All right, Coach, thank you very much. Uh, the North Carolina press conference will start shortly.